What's up, people? Welcome back to Internash. Today, I'm interviewing Mayur Mittal. Mayur is from Delhi, India, and he graduated last month from Monash University. He has done Masters of Data Science. While he was studying, while he was an international student, he got part-time job in sales and in his field and got an internship. And later, he turned that internship into a full-time job. And in this video, we're going to ask him how, what was his journey like? Why did he choose Monash University? How was his experience at Monash? How did he find the part-time job and later turn that into a full-time job? So, check it out. Thank you so much, Mayur, for agreeing to share your journey with prospective and current international students. I'm sure they'll be able to learn a lot from you. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks for having me. It's, you know, it's been wonderful. It's with pleasure that I say that if I'll be able to help even one person, I'm more than happy to do it. That's brilliant. Let's dive into um, the first question. And that was, why did you choose Monash University? Because like there are 42 universities, right? Why did you choose Monash University for data science? That's a very good question. So my thought process was like, it's first of all, Monash is one of the highly recognizable universities, not just in Australia, but throughout the world. Yeah. And then I tried to like see what masters of data science has to offer, especially from Monash, because if I'm applying in Monash that I want, you know, the quality of education to be top notch. I want students and staff to have like basically stu staff to have like teaching experience and all that stuff. Yeah. And obviously in terms of providing facilities, they provide like, you know, you have preference for timetable, then you can do projects while studying at the same time. You have like multiple campuses. So all these things fascinated me. Okay. So you research all these things before coming to Australia or choosing Monash University. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. Okay. And um, so you came in July, 2018. Is that correct? Yeah. That's right. Okay. So when did you get your first job? part-time job and how did you get that so as soon as i landed in the country obviously i think pretty much everyone wants to get a part-time job to bear their living expenses like we have this much like other like we don't want to take expenses from our parents so my idea was i'll do anything and everything but i just want to bear my own expenses not because i have some financial crime but it's just like something i wanted to do by myself yeah. So I kept looking for jobs. I started making friends in uni and then I asked them how to get a job, how to get a job. And like, you know, like the usual process, everyone says seek, indeed, then you find it in LinkedIn and stuff. So there was this one day I was just searching, scrolling through Facebook. I read a post which was about um, one experience, like when I want to earn like $700, $800 a week, which okay. was, so to be honest, the numbers fascinated me. Yeah. I read through the description. It was uh, door to door sales. Okay. And I just replied on the post saying that I'm interested. Can I just get a chance? And then later, two days ago, my supervisor called me for an interview. Yeah. So, yeah. That's how it started. Okay. So you read a post on Facebook. You know, there are a lot of scams as well, right? So um, how did you know this wasn't a scam? Um, to be honest, like I had nothing to lose. Like, even if it was a scam, like they were not asking me for any payments or stuff like that. So I just replied them and they were like, yeah, if you want to get a shot, just be here in the office at around 10 o'clock. And the other day that I went there and like get a job. So you had no sales experience. And then what was door to door, um, sales job? Like, how did you find it? That's, that's the most interesting part because I am originally from a technical background. So I have no experience in sales, yeah. but this was something that I was willing to do if I had to do because yeah. to, to bear my living expenses. So it was good. Like uh, the first week started, I barely was able to talk to anyone because I was so scared, so nervous. Okay. I'll knock on this door. How will they react? What will the questions they ask me and how I'm going to approach them? But slowly and gradually I learned, I learned. And then my supervisor helped me out a lot. Uh, within a month, I was barely I barely got like a couple of sales or a sale, but then through the process, I was able to learn a lot. And then eventually in the end, it got better and better and better. And in your best month, so it was commission job. You weren't making money based on early, early basis, right? It was a commission job. Yeah. So in your best month, what would you say? How much have you earned while you are an international student? So uh, when I got better at this job, so basically over the summers, I was working full time, like Monday to Friday, because we can't yeah. have enough food on Saturdays and Sundays. So on my, on my usual week, I'll go easy 10 to 12 sales, which was more than $1,500. So in a week, in a week. Yeah. 
That's right. So that's a lot. Yeah. So that's that, that was the entire point. So it took a little, like it took, a, it took me a little bit of time to get yeah. better at this game. But once I got the hang of it, it was really easy. But and there, were, there were weeks where you only made like 200 bucks in the whole week. Yeah, there were weeks when like I'll knock door like every day and I'll hardly get like a couple of people talking to me, not even like getting a sale, but just talking to me. Uh-huh. And then maybe I'll get a sale, which is like hundred, two hundred dollars So mm. yeah, from there to like more than 1500 is a good thing. A week. So like probably like you made like three, four thousand dollars in a month. Yeah. That is exciting. And uh, moving on to um, then you got an internship in your field. So, um, how did you get your internship in your field? And um, how did you turn that internship into a part-time job? Yeah. So, a lot of contribution of that goes to Monash because Monash has this uh, mighty program, which is Monash Industry Team Initiative Program, where they provide, you know, like undergrads, grads, or even the research students, the platform to apply and work in a in a, in a corporate world with a company. So I was fascinated. I checked it. It was a paid internship. I wanted to get it because that was my last semester after the summers. That was yeah. my last semester. So that would have been the ideal position for me if I get through mm-hmm. it. So I just uh, took a couple of projects. So every student gets three chance, but I just applied for two of the projects because I was only interested in those two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I prepared my resume. I prepared my cover letter. I wrote an exceptionally good cover letter, which I think helped me to get through the first stage, which was like the group interview. Okay. Okay. And then how was internship like? Like what was your experience of internship? Um, so uh, to be honest, it was really good. First of all, I had no experience back in India and coming here, working under us, like Australians. So that was a good feeling altogether. Yeah. And yeah. I knew from day one that if I perform well in this internship, no matter if the company is if the company's requirement are PR or citizenship, they're going to hire me because they're investing three months of their time in me. So they want to get the best results out of me. So I was willing to do that. I was prepared from day one for, for those three months I shifted in the CBD next, like 500 meters away from my office so that I can turn up early, end up late just to make wow. an impression, work hard. And that's what I did. I, Went there seven o'clock, seven thirty in the morning. Wow. I was finishing late, like till five, five thirty. I used to work on weekends as well, wow. because I know if I'm getting chance, that's the only best chance that I can have. And that's that is excellent, dude. Like that is that is really interesting. So yeah. then your internship gets over, and you still have last semester, right? Yeah. How did you ask for a full time job, or when did you get to know that they'll give you a job? That's 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 interesting. So how it happened was. With, Everyone in the team, we had a team of four. Everyone in the team was like a bit skeptical whether they should ask their supervisor about full-time jobs or like maybe continuation after the internship. But then this one day, I asked my supervisor in front of the entire team, like because we're not like, yeah, in front of the entire team. And then um, he said, no, as of now, there's no opportunity right now, but uh, we'll obviously keep you guys in loop. And I still had to discuss with my supervisor, basically my manager's supervisor and yeah, they'll give, uh, they'll get back to me by the end of the internship. So that happened. I was a bit nervous, to be honest, because I've like constantly worked hard through the three months. And then uh, we had this final presentation that got over last day. I had my exit interview. Still, I had no, like no options. He said, the work you've done is good. The project is really successful, but we'll get back in touch with you if we had something. And then a couple of weeks after. So yep. now you, you had no hopes. The internship got over and you're like, I'm not getting a full-time job. Yeah. Uh, and then they, they approach you a couple of weeks later and ask you to work for them part-time. Yeah. So that was, that was ideally like the best position possible because they, they approached me a couple of weeks after and they wanted, to me, they wanted me to be part of the team as a part-time because obviously I had my last semester so I can't work full-time. Okay. They wanted me to work two days uh, a week, but then... Suddenly this Corona virus happened and like, I remember, I still remember 16th of March was the day when the entire country went into a lockdown yeah. and I had to start my part time from 23rd of March. Yeah. So uh, the interesting thing was obviously they wanted me to start from the office and they don't want me to start working from home. So they postponed my joining date uh-huh. and that then I lost hope. I was like, I'm not getting into this company because obviously everything is a lockdown. Their business is like going down. Why would they hire a new person but then luckily things turned out my way two months after that so 
15th of May or sometime around that yeah. I got a call from my supervisor saying that I don't think it's likely to gonna end anytime soon so we would like you to start from home we're sending your laptop Whoa. work from home start <laughs> <laughs> that is exciting that is so exciting man and so then you started 15th of may you are graduating in july so those months may june july you work part time for them yeah. yeah and did you know they'll offer you a full time role or like did you have to ask for that um to be honest i was skeptical like whether i'll get a full time job uh, full time role or not but i had this conversation once with my supervisor and uh, he was like maybe or maybe not but he wasn't too sure but yeah. because like that they, so the thing about people here is they don't want to give you any word until and unless they are sure about it so yeah. my supervisor didn't tell me anything concrete he was just like yeah there are some positive signs but i can't really like offer you any time now and uh, yeah that's how it started couple of months later he approached me saying good news you got a full time job and you're starting oh. next week amazing dude that is so exciting so have you started your full time job i'm going to be starting from tomorrow next week onwards that is brilliant man well that was super helpful what would be your final advice to everybody who's studying right now or who's looking for jobs or planning to come to australia <laughs> that's a good one you're putting me on the spot <laughs> what i can say yeah possibly like uh, so it it may sound like the journey has been smooth but there has been a lot of stressful nights i know that people might not get it they they might see that you know he got a smooth transition from internship part time full time but every day was struggling for me as well um honestly i would like to say work hard work your best give your best every day um uh doesn't matter you're applying for five jobs 10 jobs 15 jobs a day just make sure whatever jobs you are applying through you're giving your best potential even if they don't ask for like a cover letter you should provide a cover letter because that shows interest that you are interested in this particular position and you want to take this internships are super important i am i i cannot emphasize on this more if you have a chance to land an internship especially before your last semester just go for it just it's it's even more important than applying for jobs because internship really turns your way apart even if it's unpaid paid i think everyone should take internships because you get a gist of like how you're going to whether you're going to like this company or not and then maybe you can move towards a full time well i loved your final thoughts thank you so much for that and sparing this time to share your journey uh thanks a lot uh, to be honest i'm more than happy to help like if people can take anything out of this video like it's going to be really wonderful and thanks for having me if you guys haven't hit the subscribe button hit the subscribe button if you have any questions or you want a specific stream to be featured or you want me to interview them write it in the comment section so that we can have more people from diverse background and we can interview them and share those stories with you if you haven't liked the video hit the like button and share this video with your friends who are in it or data science see you in the next video